Hey y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. Well, as part of our Breeders' Cup division analysis, we're going to take a look today at the Juvenile Phillies Turf. So let's get into it. So this is the Juvenile Phillies Turf, and as you can see, it's a rather big uh, list of potential candidates. And as always with the Europeans, we, we just don't know who's coming over yet and who isn't. We also have a lot of cross entries, and some of these we've covered already. Uh, Crown Imperial, Hidden Class, Jody's Pride. Uh, just to name a couple, and go for the gusto as well. We will talk about them towards the end, but uh, we're going to kind of short shrift it because we've already covered them. So what we do, as uh, as if you you haven't seen any others, uh, we try to group these by the prep races. So the first couple we're going to talk about are She Feels Pretty and Brock Nardini because they both ran in the Natalma Stakes at Woodbine. So She Feels Pretty is owned by Lael Stables, and you may remember they owned Barbaro, uh, the ill-fated Kentucky Derby winner, one of my favorites. Uh, trained by Cherie DeVoe, who's just having a fabulous year, and I think she's ready to uh, take another step forward and become one of the more prominent trainers uh, in the game. And uh, nice to see, too, because uh, we need more uh, women stepping up, and we, we've had quite a few, but uh, good to see them getting exposure. And you got the Hall of Famer, Johnny Velasquez, aboard. You couldn't do much better than that. Uh, so this one's had uh, a couple of starts, hasn't lost yet, and uh, got a first in the Natal mistakes, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, the next is Brock Nardini, and he's trained by George Weaver, who's uh, another one who's really come to the fore in turf, particularly in sprints. However, it doesn't mean he doesn't know how to train in roots. He does. And uh, this one was uh, kind of came out of nowhere at Saratoga and uh, got a nice maiden win. And uh, came up to the Natalma and something went awry. Uh, just maybe didn't like the track. It, it just wasn't a, a good race for him. But did come back and win the Salima Stakes over at Laurel. Now, I'm not sure of the quality of that field. But this one, I don't think... Uh, I think in the Tama we can probably draw a line through, and I'm not ready to ditch this one completely yet. But you have to wonder uh, about the quality uh, because his uh, speed figures aren't progressing from his initial effort at Saratoga. So, you know, maybe he was just a horse for the course. I don't know. We'll have to deeper dive, and we will later on. But uh, let's take a look at the Natal Mistakes. So this is the Natal Mistakes in the British Cup Challenge Series. And just for reference, Brock Nardini is in the four hole, and, uh, On their way, and she feels pretty the is the eleven. See, they're both at the rear the after the break. Coming through as Miss Todd simply in front, showing up with She's Fire and ready to jam. And on the outside, Rhapsody towards the pace. And about mid bag is Dancing Duchess over on the inside as they settle. In behind them came She Feels Pretty. And now coming through is Brock Nardini. It's kind of like the shadowing each other on the back there. And towards the back is Azura. So you kind of get the feeling that uh, Brock Nardini really didn't want to get away from She Feels Pretty. Or vice versa. Pretty good clip. 22 and 4. And moving through is Azura going up in the center. And racing on the outside, ready to jam from his start there. Matrona started to get around the outside of Dancing Duchess. We've got to Brock check Nardini there behind really the Dancing Duchess. Really, kind of be hard ridden to keep to get up. As they come down the side and of the she feels Golden pretty, just back. moving up steadily. And now by about three parts of a length. There's still Golden Canary from Rhapsody. A length and a half away, simply in front of Zara. And coming into fourth spot. And out wider as she feels pretty, running on with ready to jam. A length and a half behind them came on the inside. Dazzling star running on from she's Mark looks like Dazzling he's ready to get going the there. The she feels pretty in the catbird seat, perfect front, position. She feels pretty on the outside, has gone right on by, takes over from Simply in front, and she feels she pretty in the lead, really Simply nice in front, and then came Azara, Golden Canary, but she Brock feels Dardini pretty, just didn't respond. Away. In the Johnny Walker Natal mistake, she feels more than pretty, she feels fantastic, and she wins Very by three decisive on the lead, to Simply in front, Dazzling Star, Azara, Golden Canary, and out wide a dancing Duchess at the time of 135.34. Next group we're going to talk about, are all participants in the Miss Grillo Stakes, which was run at Belmont at the Big A, and is always a really good Breeders' Cup prep. First is hard to justify, and you see he's trained by Chad Brown, and uh, we'll expect to see him pretty prominently, particularly in the turf races at the Breeders' Cup. And you got Flavian Pratt aboard, and this one won the Miss Grillo Stakes, and we'll look at that in a second. 
Next is Gala Brand, and uh, another one by Bill Mott. Of course, he'll be uh, prime of the British Cup as well. Got Jose Ortiz aboard. Nice turf rider. Uh, this one was a fourth in the Miss Grillo, but did win the with anticipation stakes uh, and pretty decisively showed a really big kick. And I think this one's got a really bright future, especially in Bill Mott's hands. And then we have Life's of an Audible. Uh, Rapoli Stables, Todd Pletcher, and Rod Ortiz. We'll see them a lot, too. And uh, something of note, uh, Audible as a freshman sire. Hasn't been so great um, with his first-time starters, but the second start on the turf, his uh, his get a really, uh, really pick it up. So uh, when you're betting and you see a light, an Audible in, uh, in maiden races, particularly if it's the second time on turf, uh, make sure you pay attention to that. So let's take a look at the Miss Grillo stakes and see what happens. So this is the Miss Grillo stakes. And for reference, Hard to Justify is in the two hole, Life's Inaudible in the three, and Gala Brand in the eight. You see it's a mile and a sixteenth. So it's a really good prep race for the Breeders' Cup. Hard to Justify and Life's Inaudible right on the rail, right on the inside. Gala Brand to the outside. You see they're away pretty well. Hard to justify right to the lead. Gala Brand at the rear as expected. And Life's an Audible just raiding off. So Hard to Justify is going to be content to just rate. Gala Brand is in between horses and in eighth. Sierra Sky down at the rail runs in ninth. And then it's Steel Loot in tenth. And later, Darling trails the field in 11th, the opening quarter over the firm turf, 23 and 4 fifth seconds. And it is Camilla T. Who will so the field decent the pace. T in front by a length. And Number hard to justify two, not going to let Camilla T get away. Life's an audible down towards the rail in third. And right alongside is the gray whimsically in fourth. Boy, you got some nice Camilla prices Camilla in this race, huh? Fifth, hard to justify 7 to 1. Life's an audible 12. Dancing spirit in between horses. Memorialize in the clear on the far outside. The completer Darling, who's made up some ground down at the rail. You see they're slowing it down, skies, trying to. Then steal the loot, and and again, hard to justify trail. not going to let Camilla T get away. Camilla T. And tactically has the perfect hard position. The and really, all of them are Wimsley looking pretty good. Gala Brand's got to pick it up a little bit, closing into a slow rail. pace. You see, Life's and Audible's got Audible horse. A little traffic the there. Here is a little Here slow is to get to going, and Gala Brand right up the rail, saving all the ground. Always a risky thing to do, but uh, but found a way. Just kind of running and closing against the slow pace, and uh, wasn't able to get there. Hard to justify. Takes it. Life's an audible. Good second. So the next group we're going to talk about all ran in the Jessamine Stakes, which is a really nice uh, Breeders' Cup prep for this uh, for this race on the turf. Uh, so the first we're going to look at is Buku, and uh, uh, this is a uh, this is a nice horse. Uh, this one has been uh, making progressive strides, and uh, Phil Bauer, good Kentucky trainer, Martin Garcia, nice little advantage here is that he used to ride out in California. So he's pretty well familiar with Santa Anita. Uh, so I think Buku is going to be one to watch for sure. And then we have Pharaoh's Wine, trained by Dale Romans, uh, who got a got a second in the uh, in the Jessamine, and looks to be one on the rise and improving. And then we have Crown Imperial, who we've already talked about uh, in the Turf Sprint, and uh, he has a two turn pedigree. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they put him in this race instead of the turf sprint, but uh, hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, he did win the untappable stake, stakes, uh, as we noted, uh, for the turf sprint, but uh, he did run here as well and got third. So let's take a look at the race. So in the Jessamine, for reference, uh, Buku is in the 10 hole. Pharaoh's Wine is number eight, and Crown Imperial is number four. At the post. Advance, fractious in the gate, now settles down. 
Off in the jessamine presented See, by good Keelan level beginning. Weaver, and it was time to dazzle quick and destroy, likewise Bella Hayes. Time Bella to Hayes dazzle was one I thought would do a little better in this race, and uh, really didn't fire terribly well. You see Farrell's wine of the, of the, uh, horses, followed by time to dazzle of the three is, is a little inside, keener than the others to get up near the lead, and Buko and Crown Imperial save the ground at the back. Further back, Crown Imperial is seventh against the rail. Saves some ground there, but eight lengths off the lead. A pellet moves by from eighth on her outside. Pretty quick opening quarter, 22 and four. And Buku, who travels in the ninth position. Smooth waves in tenth. And Moonlight Gambler last of the 11. 22.84 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Bella Hayes, the leader. Bella Hayes against the rail is starting into the outside. Half leg separates the top two. And then time to dazzle. Farrell's right wine losing a little position the there. Third, Not terribly much, length, but a little. North, up on the outside by a length, advanced toward the center of the pack. Pace is pretty quick, so uh, you don't, uh, not a bad thing to fall back a little bit and not get caught up in it. The time for that first half mile. Bella Hayes toward the inside, Asternia from the outside. That's the lead battle midway on the final turn. They're separated by a half length. And then comes Time to Dazzle. Now, Time to Dazzle has See, Crown Imperial and Farrell's line have saved a little more ground. Buku making the, the, front, the, the, front, the, front, the, front, the wide move time here. Time to Dazzle has to swing wide off the far turn, and they turn for home. Bella Hayes with the lead of Sternia, a up the inside. Time to Dazzle on the outside. And then comes Buku down the center of the course. Yeah, Crown Imperial's got plenty of run. down tight toward the inside and fourth. Buku has the lead. Farrell's line as well. What a tremendous but they're just rally. no match. Buku, I mean, Buku, Martin that's Garcia just a really awesome effort. By Keeneland, Had some pace November. to run to. Well, we got to remember that. So it was an ideal situation, but that is definitely a talented horse. Next group, we'll talk about all rain in the Surfer Girl Stakes. Uh, so that's important, obviously, because it was run on the West Coast in Santa Anita. And uh, that's where we're going to have the Breeders' Cup. So the first we'll talk about is Dreamfire. And this is a pretty special horse, undefeated and uh, equally effective on dirt as well as turf. And so there may be multiple options for this one in the Breeders' Cup. But for now, we'll talk about uh, the, uh, the Juvenile Phillies turf. Uh, Buttercream Babe is a pretty steady uh, horse. Has been uh, Don't know that there's been a whole lot of progression. Uh, speed figure wise, but trained by Mike Maker, you know, his specialty is stretching him out on turf. So uh, this is one that uh, uh, paid, we can pay attention to. Went out west and uh, got a good second in the surfer girl. So maybe there's better to come. You got Ramon Vasquez aboard, another jockey who's very familiar with Santa Anita. So there's an added edge there. And then finally, Flattery. Uh, who's trained by Peter Yurton, and you got J.J. Hernandez, leading rider at Santa Anita board, and Peter Yurton is not to be underestimated. His barn is just rolling at Santa Anita. They've been in a torrid pace, and uh, I expect him to be very present on Breeders' Cup Day. And uh, this one got a third in the Surfer Girl, so let's take a look at that race. So now let's take a look at the Surfer Girl, and for reference, Dreamfire is in the, or Flattery is in the two-hole, Buttercream or uh, Dreamfire is in the three hole and Buttercream Babe is in the four hole. So they're all right next to each other, easy to follow. They're in the gate. And they're off. To and the all of them girl. broke pretty well. Ring out quickly, but now toward the inside, you see Dreamfire pretty keen to get onto the lead. Is quicker than all. And, we'll and I think this is a case of just a, a good horse, you know, so go to the front. Try to take them all the way. And you see uh, both Buttercream Babe and Flattery were raiding behind. And uh, now you have to wonder, now that we know the result, uh, it's, it's a little uh, kind of a merry-go-round race to a degree. And so we do have to question uh, how good this field was. Soho looked like a horse that had, uh, had a lot of promise earlier. And uh, so maybe uh, maybe she just had a bad day. Uh, you know, I don't know. But uh, uh, just the fact that they went basically one, two, three all the way around the track, uh, you got to wonder about the quality a little bit. But nonetheless, Dreamfire out on the lead and setting pedestrian fractions, slowing it right down. They move into the far turn. Dreamfire and Hector Berrios just in front. Buttercream Babe poised in second. A length and a half to Flattery and Soho. You see Soho's trying to make a move. Soho starts to pick it up now with a big move. And there goes Soho. 
Soho sprints up on the outside of Buttercream Babe. These two go on. Dreamfire and Gioletta is next. And then Flattery. They're at the top of the stretch. Dreamfire not done. Dreamfire's got plenty of kick Bradley. left and Open showing a lot of pluck. Buttercream Babe who's set down hard in second. Soho flattens out late. It's Dreamfire and Flattery get a little late Bradley. to engage, but uh, but did get going. Pretty solid effort, uh, holding off a really game effort from Buttercream Bay, but Dreamfire, I think, is one that, uh, on the lead, might be pretty dangerous, especially on the home turf. The last American we'll talk about is Austere, and uh, it's owned by uh, Bradley Thoroughbreds, uh, Colonel Buff Bradley, uh, shifting from training to, uh, to breeding now, and uh, quite a character. Great combination, jockey trainer, Brendan Walsh and Tyler Gaffleone. They have been red hot all year long. I will note that Brendan Walsh's barn is cooling off a little bit. Uh, middle of the year, he was awful hot at Keeneland and elsewhere. But it looks like he's uh, he's cooling off just a little bit and something to keep in mind. Uh, now, this was, uh, this was a Kentucky Juvenile Philly Stakes, and... Uh, as we know, what happens at Kentucky Down stays there. It's um, it's a unique track. This was a mile race uh, run around one turn, that big big, uh, big sweeping turn in that stretch that goes on forever uh, in a pear-shaped track. So very different uh, than you're going to find at Santa Anita. Santa Anita is small and tight, so uh, we do have to keep that in mind when we're evaluating. But let's take a look at the race. So this is the Kentucky Downs Juvenile Philly Stakes. It's a run at a mile. And uh, for reference, Austere is number six. You can see off pretty good beginning for him. Her. And uh, decides to rate just off the leaders. Awful tough to win a race on the front end at Kentucky Downs. That stretch just, it, it's like fairgrounds. It just goes on forever. And you see they start uphill. And just one of the many, uh, very, you know, different qualities of Kentucky Downs as opposed to other tracks. But uh, had some really nice purses there for sure. You see, just rating, saving ground on the rail. Pretty quick opening. And a really quick second fraction. So they're moving. Rating just off them. I think uh, Austere got the jump on some of the late runners. Got a little traffic here. Switches them out. Change leads right on, to, on Q. And the fact that this uh, this front runner was uh, stayed in it quite that long, I mean, you, then you you got to wonder. I mean, looks like he's pretty uh, pretty beat, but nobody's getting to him, so you got to wonder about the quality of the field a little bit. But uh, Austere, you know, pretty solid effort. I uh, just don't know that he beat a whole lot, uh, but certainly can build off of it. Now let's take a look at the international horses, and the first we'll look at is Carla's Way, uh, who's owned by Sheikh Al Khalifa, and uh, has got the unique uh, training of two uh, uh, of two people, Simon and Ned Crisford. Uh, James Doyle, really nice jockey aboard. You see, this one's uh, had a uh, had a pretty good campaign for two years old, and got into the Breeders' Cup by winning the Rockfell Stakes. So let's take a look at that. So here's the Rockfield Stakes uh, from Dubai, I believe, and this is a straightaway, and you'll see Carla's Way will be uh, will be prominent pretty quickly. She's just off the leader, uh, running in second here, and off on the racing. rail there in the, uh, the Aldassi, I guess you we'll call Dubai, that orange silks number again, two. A little bit uh, slow to stride. She Broke pretty well, a little bit of a hop start. there, but away not going to kill you in this race. The trip through the, just over the first furlong, Spiritual is the one that. Leads by a couple of lengths to Carla's Way, racing in second. Two and a half lengths away third, Carolina Reaper, who's about a length and a half clear there, the dark blue jacket of Ilang Ilang, who races together with Zen Jabila, and Chihuahua and Ashing Murphy in the red jacket 
I mean, straightaways are kind of hard to gauge a lot of times on what they would actually do around two turns. But, uh, you know, I, what I look for more than anything else is just a uh, turn of foot and how quickly they can uh, separate. And uh, if they have that kind of acceleration, as long as they can gallop uh, around the two turns, it makes them a good candidate. You see there's some undulations on this too. Pretty much a two horse race at this point. Interesting that this is uphill in this stretch, but uh, Carl is way not bothering. Carrying on pretty well. Next one we'll talk about has gotten uh, quite a bit of publicity, uh, opera singer. And the connections uh, make it so. Uh, Michael Tabor, Derek Smith, Magnier, all sanctions gangsters from the old days. Uh, Aiden O'Brien, the trainer, Ryan Moore, the jockey. That's a lethal combination uh, in Europe. Uh, you see this one has been... Uh, uh, been pretty impressive this year with uh, five five starts, three wins in a second. Got into the British Cup winning the pre-Marcel Boussac stakes, so let's take a look at that. So here we go at the Longchamp in, Fran in Paris, and uh, nice that we were able to get actually a French okay. race uh, to take a look at. Uh, opera singer is in the, uh, the Michael Tabor silks. You can see off on, towards the rail there on the left. Quality's a little grainy. Sorry about that. And up towards the leaders, and that's important because uh, a lot of these turf races uh, for two-year-olds, uh, finding front runners isn't always easy. So uh, it's a bit of an advantage if you have an effective one. Of Julie Cap, who's to the right of picture, maybe just out of shot a little bit of red cap at the rear of the field. Eight to ten, let's behind the leader, which is Opera Sing Up as they make their way down the side of the course on towards the home straight. Leading very narrowly to Darnation in second place. Rose Bloom against the running rails behind these in third, and then comes Sandy. The Pavo is just in behind still Ribble Tazio, Voodoo Magic behind these. Get on pretty well. Frevel and Julie Carr, the back markers. They're into the home straight. They're heading down inside. Here's where the real the running starts. Meters, the white face of Opera Singer. In front to Rose Bloom in the red slip, streaming a donation behind these. The Pavo is next as they head down inside the final 300 meters. Opera Singer extending away in front here. Look at he that. Just starting to pull away. It doesn't even look like he's going to the whip. I can't necessarily tell. But, uh, needless to say, pretty impressive for sure. Next, we're going to take a look at a Canadian import, uh, Tripolina from uh, X Men Racing and uh, Kevin Attard and Kinsushi Kimura, who also have uh, uh, Go for Gusto as well uh, listed as potential candidates. This one has yet to run on turf. Uh, ran in the display stakes, which is on synthetic, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, so we don't really know how this one's uh, uh, form translates to turf. But as we know, you know, if you're pretty good on synthetic, you're likely you're going to be okay on turf. Uh, but there's still that little question mark there. So let's take a look at the race. And this is the display stakes. And for reference, Tripolina is post number eight. The field is all in and locked up. On their way. And away okay, away was two slow. Years, and on the outside Western World, Stripolina dipping really slightly sharp what's break. spotted coming through in the center. And on the inside, Magic Slips clearly in front out wide. Western World hasn't come toward the rail yet. Early on in the second last position is banking on a miracle. King of the track got back and about three or four lengths away breaking the spell. Hanging back and Magic back. Slips coming up to join Western World with God's got it in the center in third. They're pucked up in fact tight between the first group up on the inside, banking on a miracle heading forward. Racing handy, two goes. Kind of slow for seven furlongs, I'd say. A gap of four to break the spell to catch the pack. Magic slips narrowly in front as they head towards the far turn. Pressed in the center by God Scott and three wide Western World. A length banking on a miracle. Splitting horse as well as king of the track. On the outside, going up is two ghosts taking an ever quickening Just shot. in the wings, waiting. Looks like it's time to go. Coming for the lead. Western World joins Magic Slips. Got to be swung out wide. Outside with God Scott 
Shippelin is running on, and then came King of the Track under the whip and making ground break the spell. On the outside, it's two ghosts trying to get by Magic Slips and Western Will and Tripolina, a line of four, two ghosts in front. On the outside, Tripolina coming. Tripolina finishing Pretty the best. Easy way Tripolina's of going. Tripolina's race past two ghosts, and from here on in, it's a matter of how far. And the display stakes to Tripolina. Oh, look at that. Wins well. Just Make it three. Oh, two oh, ghosts. Pretty second. impressive. Break the spell on a show photo. Or so on we can translate that to grass. Might be a contender. Next to last bank, Pretty good final time. Last, seven furlongs. So now we'll look at Angie Oletta, who uh, actually is uh, of Irish descent, but is trained in the States by Doug O'Neill and is a West Coast horse, so we definitely have to pay attention to. Uh, this one did run in the Surfer Girl Stakes, but uh, to uh, no acclaim. And, and again, we do wonder about the quality of that race as it was kind of a merry-go-round affair. However, uh, did also run in the Del Mar Juvenile Phillies at a mile on the turf and got a third. So we're going to take a look at that race. Flattery is also uh, in that one, too, so we get extra reference for Flattery. This is the Del Mar Juvenile Phillies turf, and for reference, uh, Angioletta is number six. And note that she was uh, the second choice in the betting, uh, and Flattery, number one, was third. Pain and Dana to the outside gate. Straight in, they're all set. And, uh, and broke pretty there. well. Would appear to come out smoothly. Flattery from the inside gate is quick alongside Double Bay going up to them. And here comes Kaylin Dana on the outside to join them as well. Racing in just behind the leading group is Angio Letta. Bossy Bruengel now sprinting up in the gold cap to join them. Certainly he going ducks over to the rail, off. saves some ground. Flattery broke well, but has now dropped back third last. A good eight lengths off them as they really pick it up up front. And at the back of the pack comes Oratium. And Flattery drop back, and I guess they'll re-rally or something. I don't know. But, but not surprising. Look at the pace. It's pretty uh, pretty quick at 21 and 4. Second, Double Bay down at the rail, and Kaylin Dana is in the four spot. Then we come back to Angio Letter in the green, seven off the leaders. On the far side, Oratium. At the back comes Flattery and Lotary, both of them just being patiently ridden. They closed in now, eight lengths. There's a little traffic ball. here, so let's they see how uh, Angioletta negotiates it. Just in front now, being taken on early by Tambo. At the right and has got a couple of potential mounts in the juvenile Philly, so uh, the cap, can definitely want to see who he right selects. Now. That should be a key for us, as it's from the California horses. Angioletta, a little unlucky there, having to check some traffic. alongside of the leaders. So Lottery cannot get a run, but Flattery could. He's got cheek pieces, too. You don't see that in the States too now, often. Now, Lottery gets through. now he's free. Got She's catch free. Flattery, though. Flattery, Lottery, Good kick down the stretch. The inside, but a stylish performance from Flattery. But and Flattery wins it well. A little too Lottery late there. And had pace to run, too. Uh, uh, kind of crawled in at the finish. That's a fairly slow time, I think. Uh, so... Hard to gauge out with the quality of this race, but it didn't run bad. The fact that uh, she followed it up with a clunker in the Surfer Girl does make you wonder, though. Next we'll look at is a French invader, Le Pavot, uh, owned by uh, Craig Bernick and uh, Phil Pena Graffard and uh, Michael Barcelona in the Irons. Uh, this one has been in the money in every start. Uh, six starts, three firsts, a second, and uh, two thirds. And raced in the uh, pre Marcel Boussac, uh, from which Opera Singer was able to gain an automatic berth and finish third. So let's look at that one again and see how we did, she did. So this is the uh, pre-Marcel Boussac, and we watched this one earlier, uh, noting uh, where Opera Singer, uh, right out there on the left, uh, was able to, uh, to wire the field. But uh, Le Pavot is right in here. And... Uh, just for reference, maybe try to follow along. Not always easy in these uh, European races, but uh, that's Le Pavot there in the yellow cap, the white and black. You see, he's a little covered up, right about mid pack. Green, pink, and white colors is next. We will tag you the light blue and yellow de Pavo, mainly black jacket and yellow cap there together in fifth and sixth places. And there they go, two by two in the Noah's Ark formation. The orange colors of Voodoo Magic alongside. 
Frevel is next, and she's very narrowly ahead of Julie Kamp, who's to the right of picture, maybe just out of shot, a little bit of red cap at the rear of the field. Eight to ten lengths behind the leader, which is Opera Singer, as they make their way down the side of the course on towards the home straight. Leading very narrowly. Well, Lepervo in pretty in good, good shape. To be, to be the outside, I always think it's a good place to be. Uh, you, you, you lose a little bit of ground, but when they fan out, you've definitely got an edge over some of the ones you get to the inside. And here we go. You see Le Pavot fanning out there to the right. That's a good kick. This horse there just doesn't have enough to get the opera singer. That's the bottom line. Not bad, but not good enough. Porta Fortuna is one of the top two-year-old fillies in Europe. Uh, you can see by the record, she's never been out of the money with four wins and six starts. Uh, great connections, Danaka O'Brien, that's Aiden's son, and Ocean Murphy, who uh, has done very well as a jockey when he shipped over to the States. Uh, this one would will definitely be one of the top contenders uh, should uh, she ship over for the Breeders' Cup. The question, of course, is always the surface, uh, whether she can handle it where it's a little more firm at Santa Anita. But uh, won the Chevrolet Park Stakes, or Chevrolet Park Stakes, uh, to uh, get into the Breeders' Cup. So let's take a look at it. So here we have the Chevrolet Park Stakes, and uh, you'll see uh, you'll see Porta Vatuna is in the red and blue, and I'll put an arrow on her. Uh, once they break they to give you a better, uh, give you a good reference. He's right, nice right, uh, right here, right there, with the yellow stripes around the sleeves. You see, gets away in good order and right up the middle. And a bit of a split, as they'll do. Uh, so you have a small group over to the right. And she's just going to rate right behind the leader, who was a little keen to get going, I thought. And again, this is a straightaway. No turns involved here. Purple and yellow hoops right behind them. Soprano is held up in third place, just chased along briefly as the runners hurtle past the halfway in the Group 1 jump on Chevy Park. Over on the far side, Cherry Blossom taking on Sacred Angel. You see, Portal just rating off the leaders. Persian Dream in the purple jacket coming there. Jasna's Secret and Christoph Sudan. Starting to quicken now as they get closer. And on the near side, she's quality being taken on there by Soprano. She's kind of biding her time a little bit, and now that now she's got going, now she's engaging. It's the center group that has it, though, coming through Porta Fortuna. Jazz the Secrets lost her place. Porta Fortuna, the leader, as they race on up the hill inside the final field. Hershey Murphy of Porta Fortuna wins a GP pass. Seemed like he did that mostly with a hand ride, so that's a pretty darn good horse, I'd say. With Cherry Blossom and Javara. And now we'll just tell, lad, talk about the last couple. Uh, Long, I uh, hope I pronounced that right, uh, is a French import. I was not able to find a uh, replay of the pre-eclipse uh, where she finished third, so we're going to have to sort of take a leap of faith. But uh, six starts, been in the money every time with three wins, uh, a second and two-thirds. So uh, I imagine uh, this one is is pretty competitive. And uh, we'll just have to see if we get more information uh, the closer we get to Santa Anita. Some of these we've covered before. Hidden Class, uh, we talked about in the Juvenile Turf Sprint. He is listed for this one as well. Uh, displayed a fairly good kick in the untappable stakes. Uh, I do wonder a little bit about the class of it once uh, we saw Crown Imperial uh, running the Jessamine. And uh, run a good race, but uh, did not get the win. So... Uh, you know, it, it, this is one certainly, it, I believe, has two-turn pedigree. So stretching out might be what the doctor ordered. And then go with Gusto. I like this one from Canada. Uh, watching him in the summer stakes, I thought he displayed a very good turn of foot. And a more ground, I think he's def or she, rather, is definitely going to like. And those are good connections. So uh, this might be a sleeper uh, should she draw into the race. And then finally, Jody's Pride is listed as eligible, and she has a, a, a big leg. Uh, was uh, the, the matron stake, she kind of blew that field away pretty significantly. Uh, however, that was a sprint, and this is two turns on a different surface. So we'll just have to wait and see, uh, but is listed to run on turf, and 
uh, I'll have to believe that, uh, that they're pretty confident that uh, she can should she get in the race. So from that big list, uh, this is a, what I've called it down to uh, prospects. I consider the ones to be most prominent that we ought to be thinking about. Uh, opera singer looks to be the class of uh, the class, really. Uh, that front-running victory uh, looked, uh, you know, uh, just drew off uh, uh, pretty impressively and, and left some pretty good horses in the dust. So uh, given the connections and everything else, I think you'd have to say opera singer would be the top uh, likely favorite if she comes over. And, of course, that's always the question. Porta Fortuna, another one uh, from Europe who looks uh, looks pretty darn good. And if you consider the shape of this race, uh, might give the edge over Opera Singer because uh, if you do have Dreamfire in this race, then you've got uh, uh, maybe a, a fairly good pace battle on the front end, as well as Hard to Justify, who will consider as well. Uh, Gayla Brand, I think, uh, had showed uh, with, in, with anticipation that she's got a ton of kick, and perhaps uh, uh, you know she was a little. Uh, a little late to the party at Keeneland in the Jessamine, but uh, it's Bill Mott on the Breeders' Cup, and I'm not about to throw this horse out. Definitely one to consider. Life's an audible uh, because they seem to be more attuned to turf than dirt right now for the two-year-olds, and uh, this one's likely to improve under Todd Pletcher's care, so uh, we'll consider uh, to be in the mix. Uh, Buku, I really like this horse. I, I think this is our probably... Uh, probably our best hope from the Americans to win this race. And uh, if we uh, some U prominent Europeans come over, uh, that you're going to get a nice price on a horse who I think will have uh, just as good a chance as anybody and a lot better, uh, especially if there's some pace up front to run to. Farrell's Wine is one that's steadily improving, and you always like to see that coming into these races. And, of course, you're going to get a price and could surprise uh, rating just off the leaders. Dreamfire looks uh, like a world beater, and especially since she's going to have the home advantage at Santa Anita, uh, they could easily put her in the juvenile fillies as well as this race. Uh, she is uh, pretty dominating, uh, held off, uh, held everybody off in the in the uh, surfer girl, and did so with a lot of grit. And I always love to see that. Uh, so I think this one's kind of a sleeper. Looks like uh, got a lot of talent there. And then Austere will throw in Kentucky Downs. You know, it is uh, it is what it is. But uh, under Brendan Walsh and Tyler Gaffleyon are just a great combination. And this one does appear to have some talent. Uh, it isn't easy to hold off all those horses in such a long stretch. It did so. Uh, so around two turns, we'll see. But uh, I think that this one is definitely uh, one you have to consider for this race. That's a lot, I know. Uh, it's a big list, a lot of uh, potential candidates, but uh, uh, I think it's important that we take a look at all of them, and uh, Lone is still the mystery, but uh, we'll hopefully something will shake out at the closer we get to the Breeders' Cup, and we'll, we'll see how she trains if she comes over uh, in California. So hope uh, hope this will help you. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, use it as a study guide. I think that gives us a good head start uh, getting closer to the Breeders' Cup, but we've got to start doing our deep dive. So we've seen all the horses run uh, for the most part, and I think that gives us a pretty good impression of how likely they'll fare uh, when they get to Santa Anita. If you do like content like this, of course, please like and subscribe, and thanks so much for coming by, and thanks to all of you who've recently signed up. Appreciate the support, and good to have you for the rest of the thoroughbred season and beyond. That's it from here. We'll be on the uh, we'll be posting more for the divisions, uh, so be on the lookout uh, for daily postings. I'll talk to you in the near future, and until then, be well.